Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Auto Central, South Africa's number one motoring podcast. My name is George Meany, and as usual, joined by none other than Wandile Sishi. How's it, Wandi? Not so bad, not so bad in the house, in the studio, whatever what, you want to say. What is? Was there a race this weekend? No, there wasn't. No, there wasn't a race. Not. Well, technically, at the time of recording, the French Grand Prix just happened. Um, I'm not no, going to no, give you any the time of playing. Yeah, time of, of playing this episode. This episode yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No predictions this time. I'm not making that mistake. Is it a fast track or is it a slow track? There is, a, well, it's incredibly quick in terms of straight line speed. Um, but it's kind of notoriously known as being a boring race. Uh, that means there's lots of straights, which means Mercedes Benz will win. I mean, we will see. Because they don't know how to turn corners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to, you know. This time after the, the Hamilton backlash. Hamilton knows how to week. point it in a direction and then put his foot down <laughs> and go straight. And then win a championship afterwards. Well, that's because there's more straight tracks than there are curved. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't make the tracks. Right? Yeah, I don't make the rules. So, yeah. Hamilton will be good on a quarter mile. There's no turns. Or like NASCAR or something. Yeah. 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 Like yeah, a drag actually, actually agreeing with me. <laughs> I can't believe it. Hey man, I've got, nothing, I've got nothing against Hamilton. He's very good. <laughs> He's very good. But uh, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about today. No. So uh, uh, in today's episode, uh, um, last week um, I said that my EV is fun to drive. I have my EV in the studio today. So uh, that is uh, the Jaguar I Pace. Um, what color uh, is that? In photon red. Okay. Photon red is the color. Um, Fitting name. Fitting name for the color. I think it looks exactly well, like I mean, what a photon. Sun rays are photons. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Light. So uh, um, I said that my EV was fun to drive and uh, gave us an idea. Mm. And uh, and that idea is what makes a car fun to drive? We thought we'd make this a f- bit of a fun episode. And then yeah. after that, we'll talk about electric headaches. So what are the headaches facing you as, a, as an electric car buyer? Um, and uh, uh, that is off the back of us having spoken about the myths of EV ownership. Yeah. But something we never unpacked is what are the pain points of EV ownership? Let's yeah. see if we can uh, a know, get, a, get a discussion going. And then as usual, we, uh, uh, we would have reviewed the BMW M3 competition, but unfortunately our expert journalist who uh, was going to come into studio to review the M3 competition, which would have been standing in, in the in the place of the I-Pace, um, has unfortunately been uh, exposed to COVID-19. So yeah. uh, as a precaution, um, you know, he's isolating himself and uh, we will bring you the BMW M3 competition at another episode. Sorry. And then yeah. lastly, as usual, we will be answering your motoring related questions, all things buying and selling from our Ask Auto Trader platform. So before we get into it, Wendy, where can listeners find the show? You can find the show at 9 a.m. Um, for the audio on cliffcentral.com. But if you want to see some of the cool exclusive content that we have inside the studio, such as the cars we have um, and some of our interactions, then definitely check us out on the YouTube Auto Trader SA page. Um, and if you're watching that feed, please comment, subscribe. Tell us what you think. It gives us lots of cool ideas for future shows. Yes. Tell us um, what you want us to talk about. Definitely. Tell us what you want us to try and find data on. Of course. Uh, and, uh, and we'll try and find it for you. So uh, today's episode is the fun car episode and uh, <laughs> what makes cars fun to drive. And cars are loved for many reasons. And I, I don't think, you know, many people, and we'll get to the Ask Auto Trader piece in a, uh, 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 in a few minutes. Um, and uh, and there's a, there's an interesting question that uh, yeah. that you said to me. Somebody asked, which kind of fits into the story a little bit. And and there, so wait till the end for the for for that question. But uh, uh, cars are loved for many many reasons, and I think yep. a lot of it is not functional. Well, um, depending on who you ask. Yeah, Definitely. depending on who you ask, mobility, yeah. convenience, freedom. Uh, um, yeah. You know, you can be within a car community. You can just it's drive kind of a car because it's fun. Yeah. Uh, can be functional. Um, and uh, so we're going to try and unpack the fun things about why yeah. cars are driven today. So in your opinion, what makes cars fun? Well, okay, I don't want to answer that first because I think last week you were kind of, I put you kind of in the spotlights and I wanted to understand why EVs are fun. So uh, before I answer, I want to ask you first. To you, what makes a car fun? That's a, that's a very interesting question because, you know, before having the iPace, yeah. uh, cars became functional for me. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know maybe maybe as you get like older in life, uh, cars become might become functional. Um, like I feel like a little boy again in this car. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, in 
it's kind of brought back that fun that fun aspect. factor. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and there's a couple of reasons. And I realized something about myself in uh, in 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 getting this car, and and that is, um, I've enjoyed the fast cars more. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's my reason. Um, it it go it boils down to exactly that. That little boy yeah. inside of me, that nine year old is still there, and that's that's what he loves yeah. is just the the option of you know potentially going really fast. Yes. Well, I mean, and, and, and I suppose the fun thing about the EV is- It's always you fast. You put it in dyma- dynamic mode. Yeah. No, this car's got three settings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's got dynamic mode, it's got comfort mode, and it's got eco mode. Okay. And the car changes what it is and who it is. It feels like it's a brand new car. Totally different car. Yeah. Put it in dynamic mode, you just tickle the throttle and she- it's like you can She's feel going, it's yeah. it's almost like that Jaguar, yeah, like crouching down to pounce. <laughs> this is not an ad. This is a- no, it's not an ad. <laughs> I promise you, this is not sponsored by Jaguar in the least. Yeah. Uh, it's it's it, she is unbelievably responsive. Yeah. The steering changes, uh, the responsiveness of steering. Put it in eco mode. It's different. You can put your foot down like a quarter of the way. Mm. It doesn't respond as quickly. And you can drive like a like a bit of a granny. Just listening to like hearing you speak about it, I could tell that that's it's just something that you just can't explain. You can't. It's something you have to feel exactly, and that's why I think a lot of people in the car community love cars. You see what, um, I, what uh, exactly? But what I can't understand feeling, yeah. is uh, uh, is the is the top speed need. Yeah, I also, yeah this car's you know, governed to I think it's two hundred and six kilometers an hour or something. Okay, yeah, it's kind of that's its maximum. Um, I wouldn't want to go that fast. 206 or like, you know, like 320 to the 400. Why? Why would you want to like- You would never need to. No. Honestly, uh, yeah. For me, the funnest part of a car is, is, it's, quick acceleration. is the quick acceleration. And EV gives you that hands down. And, Every single time. And, yeah. yeah. And, and what I've noticed is I've had two V8s before and yeah. those were the funnest cars for me. How does it impact the kind of, when you accelerate that fast, how does it impact the range of the vehicle? Oh no, it comes down significantly. Okay. But you begin to not care about it. Yeah. Because I charge it every night, so it is yeah. what it is. So you know, some for some people, top speed. I don't understand the top speed thing. You yeah. know, why would you, why would you want a car that can do three hundred, unless you're going to go on a track? That's different. I think for a lot of people, a car that can go three hundred is usually quick to get to a hundred as well. So, um, and it's also having the option to do that. A lot of it is for the track. So sometimes you want to- Yeah, do that I can understand. Going onto the, the track. track focused racing, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. then, you, then, you, then, you, then it's a very technical drive because yeah. from those speeds, you've got to pick your braking point. You've got to pick your corner entry, pick your corner. Well, you, it's very, once you've picked your corner entry, I suppose your corner exit is, uh, is, is a given. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, for me, zero to hundred. That's my, kind of the, that's my thing. You know? um, Fuel efficiency for some people. What is it for you? So for me, it's definitely the control. Control for me is everything. So being able to know that I can go fast, for instance, or I can corner really quickly, or it's it's almost like feeling like a racing driver. Racing mm. drivers have this equipment that can get you from A to B extremely quickly in the most fun way. And for and me, it's that's- It's like having a go-kart. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But you know, you can't really drive a go-kart on, on the road. Oh, you can, because you put this in dynamic mode. It's like a go-kart. <laughs> it's like a go-kart. For sure, it's like a go-kart. But so, I mean, th- that's the speed element. What yeah. about, you know, the, the, the recreational guys out there or girls out there with four by fours and things We've spoken about towing cars, capacity? We've kind of spoken about cars being an extension of someone's personality. Mm. Um, and that once again brings that fun factor. I think for a lot of people, your car is an expression of not just- um, like you know, your like your your chores, but rather an expression of who you are. Yeah. Um. For so some you know people who have Wranglers, for instance, they love to, you know, go balls to the wall with, with get get chirped by the Toyota Fortuner drivers. You know, just they they love to just go like you know go ape with the options that they can do to the vehicle. Um. And it's cool. It's fun to see. It's fun to see the smile that they have. It's fun to see them express themselves. It's just fun. Cars are fun, in my opinion. You know? Well, I mean, and, and, and that's the functional um, uh, thing that, uh, or the fun thing that gets the, the outdoorsy person going is, yeah. uh, and some people never drive their four by fours off tar, but yeah. they still like that feeling of- My girlfriend's the same. She she loves it. She loves Bucky's. Um, and I always ask her why. And she's she just wants to feel on top of the world. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, you know, for her, that's Why the, Bucky, not SUV? 
Um, well, she likes going off-roading and stuff. Not off-roading, but she has like a farm house that they, that's very off-road. So okay. it's just, you tell, you, oh, you know, you know if you grew up on, just grew up on a farm. Uh, if you grow up in a farm, well, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but buckies are, buckies are a thing for people that, uh, yeah. uh, you know, live yeah. or grew up on a farm. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, there's it's other things people love about cars and that is the yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. yeah, that's for this me. This car's got no soundtrack except for the zing when that you hear. Yeah. When it's reversing, actually, when it was coming in, yeah, I was like, what, what, what's yeah, that noise? It's the reverse tone. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's too, I've, I've had to be careful in the parking lots because um, uh, uh, you don't hear the car coming. Is there a reason why it's only in when it's reversing versus like- Because you're not, it's on your visual. Okay, I see. Yeah, visual area, sense. yeah. Yeah. So it's more kind of like, okay, I can't, I, there's, there's places behind me that I can't see. Although there's a reverse camera and mirrors and stuff. But You've kind of been anti-sound though. So how, like, is can you unpack why you don't like car sounds? <laughs> because I think it's an unnecessary element. To what, the driving experience or? It's an unnecessary element, in my opinion. Um, it's the, 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 the exhaust tones, besides an auditory tone, mm -hmm. do very little for the car. So people put... I disagree. Fancy exhausts on their cars doesn't really give them any more horsepower. No, but it gives them the sound. It gives them the experience of, you know, feeling like you're moving at 300 when you're going at 80. I need to take you in this EV. <laughs> but yeah, I think maybe maybe that will change my mind. But I, I, I like day, it. I many people it, I've spoken to have yeah. uh, 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 been naysayers on EVs and then suddenly drove one. Yeah. It changed their mind. I can, okay, I've, I've been on a hot lap with actually an iPace and I was blown away. But it was a very controlled environment where I could see where we were going and I was in the back seat. So I would like to be, in maybe one seat. day you can let me drive the car. You're then. more than welcome to drive it. But, but <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I, like, yes, that roar. I love the roar of a V8. Yeah, yeah. But if you, th I'll give you an example. You stop, I mean, most, most kind of residential complexes and estates today, yeah. you stop at a boom, right? Mm. Um, in my previous SUVs, I've had to, stop at the boom, switch the engine off to hear what the, the security guy speaking or to hear what the intercom is saying. Um, I've had yeah. to do that now. This car just stop and it's- I That's not talk. fun, George. That's yeah. not fun. That's not a fun experience. Not being able to hear anyone talk. I want to turn off the engine and turn it on again and everyone gets a fright. That's a fun experience. I promise Sounds you, when you, important. When, you, when, you, when, you suddenly, when you suddenly see an EV appear and you didn't hear it coming, you do get a fright. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But then some people love interiors. You yeah, know. yeah. Um, I think for a lot of OEMs, that's been a huge selling point, uh, specifically the smaller vehicles. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have realized that you're going to be inside the interior of the car a lot. So having cool gadgets, having, you know, an awesome, in, you know, infotainment system, very comfortable place to be in. What's the most important interior thing for you? Definitely infotainment. I need to be able to connect my phone, um, specifically my music and enjoy this whole driving experience. I think not so just for some the sound people of the car, but the sound, of, the sound uh, of your music when you're driving. I think no, in an EV, you get even better music. There's no <laughs> engine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, right. um, uh, so, you know, so for some people, it's cool gadgets. For some people, yeah. it's leather seats. For some people, it's- uh, That's kind of what like sold you, you right? Well, um, I think um, when it comes to a, a let's call it a, a digitally transitioned car, <laughs> yeah. Right, and you don't have analog gauges and analog things. A lot of that disappears into screens, and you know you've got menus. Yeah, um, it gives the OEM the ability to update the car's features and where the buttons are mm. um, with their software updates. Mm -hmm. Whereas in days gone by, you made a car and the button is yeah, it's and it does this, forever, yeah. and that's functional and uh, and that's done. Whereas uh, uh, in in EVs with lots of screens, you get a very different, I think, a, a, a feeling because yeah. you feel like you're in a digital environment. It's um, always changed. It's evolving. It can and it What's does. That, yeah. it, it can evolve if the OEM sees that it uh, is a requirement. So, so for me, uh, the inside of the car, um, what is the most important thing? I can't tell you. It's very the thing that drives me the the like like drives me insane the most about the inside of a car yeah. is uh, the wrong seat position in relation to the steering. 
Okay. Because okay. I like I my steering lower. Yeah. Okay. But often when you lower your steering, the top of the steering's in the way of the gauges. Of the gauges, yeah. Yes. I have that problem. Uh, and that's the thing that drives me the, like nuts the most is yeah. is when the st- because I like the steering lower, then I can't see the gauges. So yeah. with this car, it's got heads up display. So okay, that helps. Yeah. So it helps with the gauge problem, you know. But it's also it's also an issue with this uh, with this car. I'd like to pose one question then, just before we kind of wrap up the segment: is do you think cars are getting less fun? Do you think um, we're moving away from? Do you think it's just about mobility now, specifically with the advent of self-driving cars? Well, let me ask. You, let me answer the question by asking you a question. Okay. So we we used to have Blackberries with keyboards. <laughs> yeah, I re- I remember that. Yeah. So if you remember the time. Blackberry with the keyboard, yeah. um, what did the Blackberry? What do you th- no, no. But what, what do you think? Um, uh, would you think the same conversation would have happened moving to the touchscreen? Well, it did happen. And um, I remember a conversation of, it was a guy from Nokia actually who was saying that Apple's, would look, the Apple phone would never kind of pick up because it didn't have. Tactile ca- keyboard. Yeah. Exactly. So People would never catch on to that. It's, it's not kind of viable or it's, it's not going to be a useful thing that people have. But now nothing has a keyboard anymore. Exactly. And, 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 and the one thing that has come to be as a result of that is personalization. Mm. So you can personalize your keyboard, you can personalize the phone screen, you can pretty much do what you want on your phone um, in terms of like aesthetics and the way it feels and the apps that are there. Yeah. So isn't, isn't the future of a, a motor vehicle the same? As long as I can drive my car. Um, so the only thing you really need yeah. to retain the driving experience is the accelerator, brake and steering wheel. The steering wheel. If I can have that, I think I'll be happy. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not completely in love with the engine. I think there's better ways of doing things. Um, but if you can still let me drive my car, that's what I'm going to always think. Well, of Paul, it being Paul, fun. Porsche has that sound that it emits. You can push a button on the dash yeah. and it emits an electronic sound. Yeah. I first thought that, that when, when I, when I heard about Porsche, you know, doing, doing this, that, yeah. I thought it was going to be an exhaust tone and it's not, it's actually an electronic tone. Yeah. I know BMW is paying millions to do exactly that, to have, EV sounds, very native EV sounds mm. for their vehicles. Future is exciting. It is exciting. It well, shall be fun. We would have had our uh, BMW M3 competition review now, but we're not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we're going to talk more about uh, electric car headaches. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, what are the fun elements of owning an ICE versus an EV? Yeah. Um, or the unfun elements. Or the unfun elements. You know, yeah. so what what disappears when you move to an EV? You know, I think it's it's important that we kind of keep things balanced. Um, we obviously advocates for the future of, you know, auto, automotive, the, the automotive space. But, you know, it's important that we also talk about some of the things that people don't want to talk about. Um, so people can make informed decisions. Mm. Um, so kind of the things that make cars unfun for me would be maintenance services, actually buying petrol, which I think is solved with an EV. And like tolls and stuff. Those are the yeah. main things I kind of dread about like owning a car. I don't know about you. Well, maintenance is a big deal because the, 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 I think one of the challenges with an ICE vehicle, internal combustion engine vehicle, is the maintenance uh, as the car ages gets more unpredictable. Is this with an ICE or an Yes, e? ICE. Okay. Becomes more unpredictable. Yeah. Because there's so many moving parts. You just don't know what is going to have break. to need, what's going to break, what's going to need maintenance. So uh, so maintenance is a big factor when moving to an EV. That It almost disappears. Um, so it's a big factor in terms of it's a relief almost hmm. for you. Well, what, for me, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you what can, do you maintain you can now, well, like, what do you brakes, to, tires, okay. um, got to put windscreen washer fluid. That's it. Got to <laughs> take it in in 15,000 Ks time. Okay. Um, which I'm sure is just going to be like plug in, check the car. Is kind of the maintenance service period of an EV the same as an ICE? Well, this one says I've got to take it to the, Every to 15, the dealership 000. in 15,000. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I'm, uh, uh, I need to, I need to, I need to check what they're going to do, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's just going to be plugged in. And, uh, and can you diagnose do- it yourself? Like, can you, I don't know, is there like an app where, if you like, if you own an EV, can you see the diagnosis of your cars? I don't think so. No, because I mean, remember, these cars are still like. Um, would you want to diagnose 
the components inside your phone. So you I wouldn't know even that, know what to do with it. Exactly. So, so yeah. the, for this phone's got an accelerometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, which kind of like tells you it's, um, uh, uh, you know, where it is in, in, in space. Yeah. Like it tells yeah. you how it's turning, the accelerometers. Um, do you even think of the word accelerometer in here? No, no. I mean, Would you want to diagnose it? The same with I, the car. I don't know. I just like, I'd like the option. Um, I think a lot of people who own cars enjoy the aspect of like fixing them. Oh, well then, then, then you've got to kind of like, I suppose, stick to the old school <laughs> yeah. ice engine. Okay. What about services? Um, so do, again, there's nothing to, what's there to service? Like even brakes. If you drive the car nicely, you will hardly use its brake pads. When you have to take your car in, is it just purely just they checking out if everything is working? The same? I, I, I would imagine. And uh, maybe it's something we can do some research on. I would imagine that uh, it's got to do with checking the electronic um, systems and modules. Yeah. Because I had to take it in the other day to do a software update because okay. the car had uh, the car had gone out of date um, with its software and it wasn't downloading the software. So I had to take it into the dealership in order for them to do it. And now okay. it'll update by itself. Um, but they said to me when I, uh, when I went to Jaguar Land Rover Santon, they said to me, um, we had to interrogate every module. So I said, what does that mean? Well, they had to check every module that, uh, uh it was, it was actually giving the right signals and the software was up to date. Yeah. So, so I would imagine that service and maintenance is, is that kind of thing. Checking that every piece of electronic equipment in the car is still it's functioning like it's supposed and to. And talking to each other. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, this car has a thing called a TCU unit which is a communications unit. And, uh, and if that commission c- communications unit fails, the yeah, car won't be able to communicate. Yeah. Okay. But, but that's kind of a rare like situation though. It doesn't really, if you had to buy an EV, that's not something that you're going to have to worry about so much. No, no. I mean, it's like, does your phone, I think the biggest worry in an EV is, is really the battery. Yeah. Like we, 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 we're not far enough down the road in the world to really know uh, what the future of the batteries are because lithium iron does deteriorate yeah. over time. But there's new technology that's kind of facilitating it's, that. It's, as well. it's, it's moving all the time. And the nice thing about these cars, I think, is is the battery packs yeah. uh, can be replaced. Yeah, they just switch out the entire- just The entire cell, yeah, yeah. or the entire, entire battery pack. Um, what about tolls? Pet- well, you said petrol is one of your bugbears. Yeah, well, I hate, I hate having to, you know, I hate petrol prices. They- they make me sad. I'm getting sad just thinking about it. Is it the petrol price? The petrol price, it's, yeah, it's too much for me. So I wanted to know now with that not being a problem for you, um, you know, is is I'm assuming it's not an, an unfun aspect. Now it's actually a fun aspect, the fact that you don't have to. I drive past the filling station. I've driven past a, driven past a few of them. I've stopped for coffee at one or two. Yeah. Um, you know, you can see, you know, stop. How do you, uh, what's the process of actually buying a charge for your car do you just yes that's a good question um as a matter of fact in the in the windscreen visor there is a jaguar card okay um which doesn't only work at the jaguar i was um, about to ask can you yeah. use it, at jaguar? Use it any any uh, uh any affiliate charging station on the network um and uh you don't need even need the card because you've got a you've got a phone app that has an rfid Scanner on yeah. yes, and then the RFID appears on the screen of the charger. Yeah. Scan it. You got to have prepaid for electricity, so okay. you got to buy tokens, which yeah. is in the back end of the dashboard. Um, and then you just swipe it, and uh, it charges your car, and uh, um, and takes it off your your tokens. Okay, it's, it's very simple. So it's a sp- very seamless process. It doesn't have to be specific to. It's not like Jaguar is the new engine now. You can pretty much go to Shell. Being well, any station, yes. Yeah, so the the, the plugs the plugs are the important part. So fortunately, around the world, they've standardised the plugs. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like uh, you know, it's yeah. like a phone. You know, the only the only the only outlier is Apple. Yeah. Okay. Um. Last question. Well, not last question, but with regards to petrol, I wanted to know: Can you just put a generator in like your car? Can you just like have one I there? I can't believe you're actually asking <laughs> this question. I think it's a very good question. Well, you told a- me a story that, just now about uh, some dude with a Tesla that uh, yeah, uh, had a generator, exactly that, yeah. generator in the back. Because yeah. what, what, what was the story? Um, so basically this person was asking around, he had a jerry can and he was asking people, you know, for assistance with gas for his Tesla. American probably in Florida, like, right? Yeah, definitely. And people were like, what do you mean? And then he opened his boots and there was a generator there to power his, his battery. And and, well, and to Reino, recharge the car. One of our journalists was actually telling us that the BMW i3 
REX has that exact tip. You know, until very recently, I did not know that. Yeah. That the REX has a petrol <laughs> generator inside <laughs> the boot. Yeah. I did not, with nine liters of fuel. I which can get you problem. another 140K. I think it's like a vegan secretly eating meat. <laughs> like it's like a hybrid. Basically, it's it's a hybrid. But I think it solves the, technically, it doesn't drive the, the wheels. It doesn't drive it the wheels, but it, the, can, the it can get you extra range if you do run out of, which I think, I, su- I suppose, is, a, a, yeah. is not a bad thing. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a generator in your car. It works. A generator in the boot, so yeah. you know that's that, that's like that's like stashing meat as a vegan. I'm afraid, <laughs> but it's. I mean, and then I've driven I've driven the BMW i3. You have, it's yeah, quick, but it wasn't the REX. Though. I don't know. I'm now wondering because <laughs> I doubted it as an EV. <laughs> it could have just been the the fully electric one. Okay, exactly. the last question was with regards to tolls. So. I'm assuming EVs, you just pay the same tolls as, as anybody else. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it could be an opportunity for the government in the future to uh, to change the tolling system in the short term mm. to um, to lower for EVs to stimulate demand, and then and then higher for uh, for um, ICE vehicles, and then later on switch that to get mm. because I mean, governments need tax in order to survive. Um, so, uh, but at the moment, there's no difference. You've got a number plate or. Uh, uh, um, or you go through a toll booth and you pay exactly the same as any other car. So I wouldn't say that there's actually like my insurance company, as a matter of fact, no, there's 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 no there's no difference. There's no benefit. It's not like unfun. No, I'm talking about in general in owning an EV. Does I, I wouldn't say there's unfun factors. I would just say there's different factors that are not as fun as you know the fun factors. Well, there's funny fun factors because um, when I uh, uh, when I insured the car, yeah, um, the insurance company said. Um, what is the engine size, engine capacity? That was the question. What is the engine capacity? And uh, the dealership actually answered the insurance company and said uh, it doesn't have an engine. Mm. And uh, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a bit of a chuckle because it was a back and forth once or twice. It was like, what do you mean it doesn't have an engine? It's an electric car. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Yeah, people still need to wrap their heads around this tech, which yeah. is now instant roads. Exactly. So we're going to get on to our uh, Ask Auto Trader segment. Every day people send in uh, motoring related questions about all things car buying and selling. So Wendy and I will attempt to answer some of these burning questions. Wendy, what's the first question? First question comes from Sasuke, which I think is a reference to Naruto, um, the anime. But uh, Sasuke is asking- Say that in English. Sasuke. It's a character from an anime, Naruto. Yeah. I'm actually watching currently. Anyways, 93 or 95 unleaded for- No idea what he's talking about. My God. (laughs) Uh, 93 or 95 unleaded for my car. Uh, this person drives a Peugeot uh, 307 automatic and they just want to know what fuel is best for their vehicle. Well, I mean, let's first uh, first off say, unless you are going to drive like a bat out of hell and you want a marginal difference, yeah, small difference, the difference between 93 and 95 is not going to be anything to write home about. Might as well just save Doesn't money. it have, e, like, isn't it cleaner? Like better for your engine to run ninety five? Not significantly enough. Um, it's uh, uh, it's ninety five or the higher octane fuels are only there for high performance turbocharged engines okay. at high altitudes, like here in in, yeah. in Gauteng. So so if you uh, you know um, if you want if you have a turbocharged car and your driving style, mm-hmm. um, you know some some cars um, start to develop what uh, our journalists say is a uh, is engine knock or something, um, which yeah. which happens at low RPMs if you use the wrong octane. Okay. Um, um, so, but but generally the, the the car compensates. What about like SUVs? Uh, is because I know SUVs recommend ninety five. Yeah, any, any OEM is going to recommend the higher octane fuel. Okay, the car just runs a little bit better, but you're not going to. I don't think you're going to feel that much of a difference. So you tell me, I've been paying extra for nothing. Pretty much. <laughs> Right? Like it, it, it doesn't really make that much difference unless, yeah. again, it's 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 turbocharged cars yeah, okay. do perform better on ninety five octane. Other than that, you're really not going to find that much difference um, unless you're racing around like a better. So you wouldn't break your car if you run ninety three and the uh, recommend is ninety five. No, I mean follow the OEM's recommendation. That's Definitely. the first thing I'd say because yeah. there may be something that we don't know. Um, yeah. But I haven't heard anything that says that ninety three versus ninety five is any different in most cars. Okay. Next question is from Leb SVN, who's asking configuring your own spec. So, well, is it, it's, is it having a bit of a? It's uh, kind of yeah. Line, eh? 
it's kind of uh, long-winded, but essentially what's the use of car manufacturers having car configurer tools in their websites if dealerships just go and buy whatever they want um, and not, you know, kind of what you configure. Um, so this person is just kind of frustrated with the fact that uh, he or she went to the dealership and tried to configure a vehicle, but then South Africa didn't necessarily have... Um, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but have that, that spec. Lib SVN, mm-hmm. uh, you're just suffering from the classic uh, um, challenge of uh, instant gratification. <laughs> Because that's what Lib SVN wants is yeah. is they want a particular spec and it's not available currently. Currently, yeah. And guess what the dealership's going to do? Just order it. No, they're going to want to sell you what they have because they can make of the course. sale now. Yeah. So, so if you don't want that spec, just tell the dealer I don't yeah. want that spec. I want a di- spec. I want a different spec. Yeah. And uh, and ask the manufacturer if they can order that spec. You know, you might have to wait, and I think that's the challenge that's with Lib SVN is, 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 is you don't want to wait, right? Yeah, that's yeah, kind you of don't, you, So if you want something bespoke or special, you, you, you're going to have to wait for it. Makes sense. Um, Hope that answers the question. And then lastly, uh, JC Swanapools asked, good day. I've tried to do some research on the 2018 Yaris currently available in South Africa. How reliable are they? Well, uh, Mr. Swanapool, uh, a Yaris is a Toyota. What does that mean? Most of Africa is painted red. Yeah, because of its reliability, I mean, I'm assuming exactly. that's where you go. Well, yeah. yes, and, and they've done a good job to market themselves and they're, they're very reliable cars. So uh, so without reservation, um, uh, the 2018 Yaris is a, is a rock solid car. Mm. Um, they depreciate quickly, mm. um, but, you know, if you're planning on keeping the car for any you know, reasonable period of time, you, you're probably going to uh, get cheaper parts, cheaper maintenance, because there's no shortage of uh, parts Toyota and parts. service for uh, for Toyota. Um, uh, you know, the other the the other cars are not far behind. Uh, uh, you know, so very good car is a is a Polo. So uh, you said you may be looking at a Polo one liter TSI, but worried uh, that the, the maintenance, maintenance costs. costs yeah. um, and uh, you want the car to last you a long time. Well, but Polo is a so- rock solid car as well. Yeah, with lots of parts as well. With lots of parts as well, because yeah. you know they they're all over the place and they're very popular cars. Yes, the insurance cost for a Polo might be higher, yeah, because it's a more risky vehicle. Yeah, but uh, nothing wrong with a Polo. It's not going to let you down if you check out its history. If you buy a second-hand one, that is. Huh. Well, based on that, I think the JC the choice is yours. But both are kind of what you're saying is both are. Are good. Exactly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today. And uh, that's been epic. My name is George Mini, as usual, joined by one Dile Sishi. Uh, and uh, we'll see you. This is after the French Grand Prix. <laughs> yeah. Hamilton won. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I did say it. <laughs>